it's a little baffling to me. Um, and of course, it's been a long time since I learned this. It's a little baffling to me how people struggle with the minor axis and the direction of the minor axis and how to figure out where the minor axis should be. And so I've got, I, I tried to come up with a way that maybe can help you visualize it a little bit better. And so um, let's just draw a, a vertical line. And let's put a dot, we're going to draw um, a horizontal ellipse. I want you to put a dot where maybe the center of that ellipse is going to be. The degree of this ellipse doesn't really matter. But just sketch an ellipse with that dot as the center. Let's come down a little bit and basically sketch another ellipse. The same one. We're looking at drawing essentially a cylinder here. Now, if this is below the horizon line, which it is, I'm going to finish it in just a second. If this is below the horizon line, as we draw more ellipses further down, further away from the horizon line, will the degree of the ellipse get wider or thinner? It will get wider. Okay, good. So now I'm going to measure down about an inch or so. I'm going to put a really small ellipse. And if I'm thinking about anything, it's going to be just a little bit wider degree than the ones that I've drawn right here. I'm going to draw another ellipse that is about an inch above the center of that top ellipse. And so if I draw this one, I want it to be the same width as this one. But if anything, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner degree ellipse. So as it goes down, uh, if it's below the horizon line, it should be getting wider. The opposite would be true uh, if it was above. And so now I'm just going to draw a couple little cones. One that's pointing down and one that's pointing up. And I'm going to, basically, I'm thinking of this, these cones as arrows. So I'm going to give a little bit of thickness. It's just a three-dimensional arrow. And I'm going to think about this thing as just a ribbon or a wheel, a real thin wheel. I do want you to darken in the object lines here. And let's even hatch some of this. Let's, uh, let's assume uh, uh, a light source that's coming you know, over our left shoulder. I'm going to hatch this by drawing these lines and then letting them get a little bit further apart as they go on the inside there. And then on the outside, I'm going to do the opposite. These will get further apart as they go to the left to just kind of show a gradient surface. I'll add a little bit of hatching to these arrows. And those, that, those hatches could be at an angle. And so now I've got this object. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because I think that Maybe if you get this stuck in your mind, you might think about how the minor axis is kind of like a, uh, an axle, if that was a wheel. If your ellipses are a wheel, your minor axis is an axle. I thought about making you guys draw the, the space station in the movie 2001, Stanley Kubrick, because it's kind of these two wheels, and then there's a center hub, and we were going to visualize it that way. Maybe you still can. 
Okay, so now I want you to just draw an ellipse that's at an angle. Let's start with the ellipse over here on this left side. Excuse me, right side. And as I said earlier, I typically prefer to draw the minor axis first, but in that case I didn't. But I, if I have an ellipse, I can always find the minor axis. So let's draw in a minor axis, let's plot where the center of that is, and let's basically draw this same object again but over on its side with that as a reference. And so I can drop in another ellipse. And then measure out. Notice how I'm using these, these marks to help me find where my objects are. Uh, you know, the, the beginning of the arrow, uh, that cylinder or uh, <coughs> cone is going to be here. And then I can measure out in the opposite direction. I'm using that minor axis to help me plot where these things exist. And that can help you uh, with a whole bunch of different sketching exercises like, uh, you know, drawing a camera, for example. If you're drawing the lens of a camera, you can use those center lines, and, and this measurement should give you the same measurement that's out here. So if, like, I'm trying to figure out the thickness of this cylindrical kind of ribbon, um, that should be the same if I, hit, if I actually hit those. That should be the same as this outside thickness. And the distance here, um, I can just measure from there to there, and ultimately, the reason why I'm trying to do this is I'm trying to put this arrow right through the center of this uh, cylindrical ribbon shape. And so, if I'm just like, uh, if I'm going further away from the horizon line, the ellipses get wider. If I'm going further away from the horizon line, wait, that's not true. If it's going further away from me, um, should these ellipses get wider or thinner, going in the direction of the arrow? It's gonna, oh, that surface will open up towards me, right? The further away it gets, and so they should get wider. So this should be the thinnest one, this should be the second thinnest, that should be the third. Um, on a drawing like this, it's not necessarily that important, but it can add some, uh, some dynamic aspects to a drawing. So let's just complete that cone. Let's complete a cone back here. Let's give some thickness to the arrow. I won't see, I should have a dark line there. So I won't see that uh, the arm of the arrow down there, but I will see it as it intersects the arrow back there. Uh, take some time and care. You'll notice, as I talked about ellipses earlier, you know, they don't have to be perfect when you just are sketching and constructing them. If you look at these ellipses right here, they're kind of terrible, but now I know, you know what, I need to cut off some of that right here, and I'm going to bring it out a little bit further over here, and so when I slow that pen down, I'll think about those things. And this should accelerate. Okay, and lastly, let's uh, add just a little bit of hatching to this. So that should help you. It doesn't matter if it's a, an ellipse facing, um, a horizontal facing ellipse or a left or right facing ellipse. You can think about that minor axis as, as the axle, just going straight through it.
One last thing when, as we're talking about cylinders, I mean, excuse me, cones, just draw a cone from a front view. So a cone from a front view basically looks like what, a triangle? So I don't have any perspective on this. This is basically an orthographic cone. Go ahead and shade it a little bit. Let's, uh, with the hatching. So what you want to do with a cone is basically the same thing we were doing with that cylinder, but as you move from one side to the other, they're going to get further and further apart. But now I want to draw that cone in perspective. Just one that's sitting on a, a horizontal surface. So the first thing I'm going to do, draw a minor axis. We're actually going to draw two of these. I'm going to make this to where I'm looking down on this cone, not directly down on it, but that's going to be a pretty wide ellipse, wide degree ellipse. I'm going to think about the proportion. I want to draw the same one so it's a little bit taller than it is wide at the diameter. So I'm looking at this diameter and I come up, I put a dot there, and then I connect the dots to the outside. And now slow the pin down. But what I want you to think about, actually before you do that, this is kind of my point of this exercise. So if we look at just this detail, this is something that a lot of people miss this summer. If I look at just that detail where that line meets the ellipse, the only time I should ever see a corner, like a, a, a non-tangential relationship, is in this orthographic view. I'll see a, an angle there. But immediately, once this thing starts to go into perspective, the relationship of this ellipse to this line should be a smooth tangential relationship. So let me blow that up a little bit. As this comes around, you won't get a corner. You just get a nice smooth relationship. And so as you darken the object in, object lines in, think about that. And let's draw, just to prove that that's the case, let's draw one more over here with a real thin ellipse, like we're, you know, we're just barely in perspective and not orthographic. So a real thin ellipse, you know, I'm thinking about that height relationship. Somewhat connect the dots. And then here as it rolls around, even though it's real thin, it does the same thing. It's almost an angle. It's almost a corner. But it's not. <clears throat> 